Hi everybody and welcome back to 30 for 30, your Excel VBA absolute beginner course. How are you today? It's good to be with you. It's a nice day here in the Midlands in the UK. How are you getting on? Now, before we get into the spreadsheet stuff and the chat for the live people, we will be doing a member hangout today. So this is just going to be for the members. But after today's session, you can see it about quarter to five, quarter to five UK time going to have a members hangout and there's not going to be any Excel in this session. So it's just going to be uh, having a chat. I want to hear about what you're trying to do with Excel. want to hear about what you'd like to see on the channel, what you'd like to see in the membership. So we'll do that today, straight after 30 for 30. If you're interested in hanging out, go ahead, uh, pick up a channel membership. You can get one for one pound, one dollar a month. And I'd really appreciate the support. As always in the chat, can you let me know if you can see me and hear me? Thank you, Lee. Uh, for that one. And welcome to everybody in the chat who is with us today. Uh, welcome to Paul in particular. Paul has just taken out a channel membership. Jasmine is with us. Now, Jasmine's cat is sick. So um, all best wishes to Jasmine's cat and keep us updated, Jasmine. I hope he gets better. Welcome, Adrian from Wales. Good to see you. And who else do we have with us today? Just going down the chat, still going down the chat. Frank is with us. Welcome, Frank. Lee is with us. Welcome, Lee. Ian is with us. Welcome. Henrik is with us. Henrik is asking, are there any accountants in the chat? So do let us know. Welcome, Henrik. David from South Africa is with us. Welcome. Gusa from Spain. Welcome. Jorgen is with us. The general is with us. Can you salute the general, please? Ian Lamb is with us. Welcome, Ian. Welcome, Mike. Who else do we have? Anita is with us. Is this your first stream, Anita? Let me know. Good to have you with us today. Klaus is with us. Welcome. Mike Botopenko is with us. Good to see you again, Mike. Lisa is with us. Francois is with us. And is that everybody? If I've missed anybody, you are just as welcome as anybody else. It's not deliberate. Great to have you with us here today. So go ahead. In the video description, there's a download file. Download the file and you can work along with me. We're working through our real world type VBA tasks. Remember the structure of the course, the first 15 parts. We kind of covered techniques and a few easy applications, the traffic lights. And then in the second half of the course, we're trying to do applications because application is really the critical skill. Doesn't matter how many tools you have if you can't translate them into the real world context. So it's good to start thinking about this kind of real world challenge that you might have to come up against. And this is our briefing. We've got our file that you can download. And in the last stream, we started working through the putting the coding in the stream before. Of course, we did our conceptualization and planning. That's why we have all of these notes in the code. So we've managed to dynamically define the data that we're working with, and that brings particular advantages. It means that if we're adding data to the data set, taking data away from the data set, it's still going to work. And we even looked at a situation like this where we might have a gap in the data set. The approach that we've applied should still work. So our code has dynamic quality. That means it's going to be sustainable. It's going to work uh, in the long term. So we've managed to define the range. Let's look at looping through this range. That's what we're going to do in this stream. Look, uh, looping through this range and possibly at creating individual sheets. Because remember, we need to create an individual sheet for each of these categories, dog, client payment, fuel, whatever it might be. We need to separate these across sheets. Go back to the briefing, which is also in the file, by the way. If you hit the task sheet in the file, you can see the briefing there. But go back to the briefing for the specific details. So what kind of what might our loop options be? And I was originally thinking of for each loop. So we can use Excel consists of objects and collections, collections of objects. So we can say to Excel, loop through all of the cells in this range. That would be one way to do it. But we're going to use a for each loop later. Can you can you visualize now when we might use a for each loop? So I thought let's use a for next loop. So we use different kinds of loops on this task. So for next loop, uh, I'm going to use an integer variable. In fact, let's go for a long variable. Uh, an integer variable would only work up to 32,000. And this variable is going to count through the rows in the data set. So you can see these annotations, they're even useful uh, when we're defining variables. Just to, to remind us what the role of the variable is, there's 
a few things helping us here. We have an informative name for the variable. That's good practice. Supporting that with some annotations is also helpful. So we can go ahead and say now, this code I think we can dispense with, and we've got to think of our for next syntax. So when did we do a for next loop? Seems like so long ago now, doesn't it? Seems like so long ago, was it stream five or something? We did a for next loop. So let's say counter equals, I'm going to say counter equals four. Why four? Because four is the first row in our data set. And again, you might say, but Chris, that's a hard coded value. It is a hard coded value, but we're saying there's a balance to strike here. Having some hard coded values and informing the customer about them, that means we can simplify the coding quite a lot. So it's where is the balance? You know, the occasional hard coded value can be advisable for that reason to avoid unnecessary complexity in the code. So for counter equals four, two, and then we can use our end row variable here. So we've got to make sure we've got the ordering right. We've got to make sure we assign the value to the variable first and then go ahead with open the loop. So let's uh, close the loop here. There we go. And we've got our basic structure for a for next loop. What's a nice way to test um, a for next loop? Let's just say message box counter here. Um, and I'm going to put a breakpoint in the code and then just hit the F5 key now. Is everything working? Yep. So the first time we go through the loop is the value is four. It's going to increment up by one, five, and there we go. Now, if you didn't put the breakpoint in the code, you'll just have the message box flashing up uh, 500 times, which isn't ideal. If that does happen, happens to me all the time, hold down the escape key on the Windows PC, hold down the escape key. That's going to allow you to exit the code. But breakpoints are so useful for just stopping the code, useful for doing this testing. And as always, we build a little bit of code, then test it, a little bit of code, and then test it. So let's see if we can say to Excel, I mean, what, what, what are we trying to do here? Yep. We're, we're kind of down here in our, um, there we go. Just going to lift these annotations back up into the code, into this uh, loop. So identify the category for this row. The conditional statement, does a sheet exist for this category? So that's literally what we're trying to do, you know, in plain English. And how are we going to do that? Well, again, our annotations are helping us. What techniques do we need? Conditional statement is going to help us here. And how's the syntax going to work? So if we say, um, yeah, let's make another design, design decision here. I'm going to be specific about the sheet. And, and this is something we've kind of kind of avoided so far in the program because I've tried to simplify things as far as possible. But generally, it's good practice to be explicit about which sheet are we working with. Now we do that by including this sheets syntax. That's important because it means wherever we are in the file, and we're going to have a file that has multiple sheets in, wherever we are in the file, this code should be able to execute. And I'm going to go up to the previous code and put the sheets reference in there as well. Uh, so if sheets data dot range, and then what's our cell column, if you like? Column D here. So now we have some neat syntax. So we put the D in speech marks, then use the and sign to concatenate or join together uh, a string with a variable. We've got a one character string here uh, with the variable. Our variable is counter, of course. And then, okay, maybe we won't use an if statement here. Maybe we'll assign this value to a variable, actually. Yeah, let's let's create a variable for this. And let's say target sheet. And this is gonna be this is gonna be a string. So we're gonna use a variable here. What's a variable? A place to store information. And this variable is going to store category name. Okay, when we look for this name in sheets, yeah? Because again, we've got to think about our logic, what's going on here. Well, we're going to take this value, take the name of the category and look through the sheets in the file. Does the sheet exist? If the sheet doesn't exist, then we want to create that sheet. 
So let's allocate it to a variable. That's going to mean we can kind of manipulate the information easier later when we're looping through sheets. So we've just taken that value, allocated it to a variable. Is this a good time to have a little test? I'm going to do one more thing here. Go to the other side of the screen, make sure you can see. Make sure you're working along with me in the chat, by the way. Yep, so again, our principle now is that we're going to not assume that we're on the sheet we need to be on, and we want to create a routine that's going to work regardless of which sheet we're on. So we're going to be explicit about putting the sheet names in, and we'll look at a way that we can simplify that later at some point uh, in this routine. So we've got our, our loop set up, and now I'm interested, are we getting a value into this variable? That's what I'd like to test now. So I'm going to go ahead, uh, control S, save the file, hit the F8 key. Yeah, people in the in the chat are saying, yeah, I like to externalize the value of the variable using a message box, which is what we just saw. Other ways to do that are using the, the immediate window. So you can go view in the VBA editor. An immediate window gives us useful information about what's going on in the code. So you can check that out. And also debug.com print this line of code debug.print that Jasmine's just put in the chat. So if you're not comfortable with the message boxes, that's the simplest way for me. It also means I keep the layout of the VBA editor simple without the immediate window, but um, that suits me best. But you can, of course, um, try debug.print or using the immediate window. Hitting the F8 key now, going through the code. Have we got a value into our target sheet variable? Yes, we do. And our value is dog. Let's go back to the spreadsheet. And we can see, yes, the first value is dog. So now we can go through. And the next value should be, of course, should be client payment. Let's do a bit of resizing here. There we go. Hitting the F8 key again. And now we have client payments. Hitting the F8 key again, hovering the cursor over the variable. And I can see how we're looping down the rows. And we've got different values being allocated to that variable. So for example, counter is now eight. So we're in row eight and the value in the variable is fuel. So we can go to the spreadsheet and we can see in row eight, we have uh, that fuel value there. So super powerful stuff. Are you feeling the power? You've got to feel the power of VBA. You know, we've only got what, how many lines of code here? four lines of code, some variable declarations at, at the top, and already we've got a super powerful uh, mechanism. Uh, welcome to James. James from Malaysia. I think it's your first uh, stream with us. So welcome. Thank you to everybody for saying they can see and hear me. That's helpful. Uh, oh, Anita is over in Australia. We've got a few viewers in Australia. Uh, Mark is, is over in Australia as well. Mark Prince. Uh, shout out to Mark Prince, by the way. And uh, yeah, so the Australian viewers, good job on keeping up with the streams. I'm not sure if you're watching. Ah, Anita, of course you're watching live today. So great job. It must be what, one o'clock or, or three o'clock or something. Great job. Really good to have you uh, with us. Okay, good. So if we've got the value into the variable here, now we've got to say to Excel, okay, I've got to find a way of communicating to Excel. Um, is this value, is it a sheet name somewhere in the file? This is our next challenge. And do we have, yep. Yeah. So we've got our annotations here. See how our annotations are helping. Pop these annotations in here. So this in, in English is what we're using to do. I'm just going to clear these out now, clean these up. So how are we going to do this? Let me know in the chat. We want to... Um, oh, that's not quite the right annotation, is it? There we go. Th this is what we want here. Okay. Yeah, we want some code to loop through all the sheets and then to establish is the name of one of she the sheets actually target sheet? I'm just tidying up the annotations here a bit. So this is what we're trying to do. What mechanism have we got for doing that? Anita says it's 11.15 p.m. Still a good good job, Anita. You must be in Western Australia then, if it's 11.15 p.m., Perth maybe. What mechanism are we going to use to, don't want to give it away, <laughs> to go through the sheets in, in the file and to establish if the name of one of the sheets is 
the value that we have in the target sheet variable. We need a mechanism to do that. What's in your toolkit? Now it's time to get in the toolbox, get the toolbox out. What foundational concepts have we got that might help us? So I'll wait for the chat to catch up and what mechanism are we going to use to get this done? Ian saying lesson eight. It's a very good Ian. I've got to say, I don't know off the top of my head exactly what lesson eight was, but it was around there on the program, I think. Anybody else in the chat? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and give you a big clue at the top here. Let's say Dim Chris Sheet as worksheet here. I'm going to say variable to loop through the worksheets. So this is this variable is going to help, but this variable isn't the actual mechanism that's doing it. It's only supporting the mechanism. And then we're going to say for each Chris sheet in, I'm going to say this workbook. Uh, yeah, let's say this workbook dot sheets. So we've now opened the loop and let's go ahead and close the loop here. Okay, Mike is on the money. Ian also on the money too. Yeah, well done. Good contributions. So for each Chris sheet in this workbook dot sheet. So we're using two different types of loops. And, and this is why I've gone for this setup to demonstrate two different kinds of loops here. So we've got a for next loop that's going through the cells, of course, in the data set. And then we've got a for each loop here. And what's a for each loop? Well, it allows us to loop through, allows us to work with Excel's collections. Excel consists of collections of objects, open workbooks, is a collection cells in a worksheet is a collection worksheets in a workbook whoa now we're talking that sounds interesting that's one of the collections we have access to because that's how excel is set up it's all part of excel's architecture so we can harness that and say to excel do something to all the sheets in the file now we're going to go ahead okay quickly Let's just prove this is working. And let's just say Chris sheet dot name here. Test this mechanism is working. So again, I'm using message box here to externalize the value of the variable. And I'm going to put a breakpoint here. Now you're going to make again, make sure you put a breakpoint in or you might end up um, having lots and lots of message boxes flashing up here. So I'm going to hit the F8 key. Got a value in the target sheet variable. So we've got a loop within a loop. So quite a complex setup. Hitting the F8 key, Chris sheet dot name. Okay, it's data. Good. And then the F8 key again, message box flashing up and Chris sheet dot name is task. So you can see Excel has told us the two names of sheets in the file there. Can you see how we're inching towards uh, getting this task done or this particular part of the task done? So I'm going to re reset the code here. Now let's introduce something new uh, on the program. And I'm going to say sheet found. Now I want a variable which is going to allow us, it's just going to show true or false, this variable. So what type of our variable do we want? And Jasmine's on the money with a conditional statement in the chat there. So this is going to be a Boolean, Boolean variable. Never sure about how this is actually pronounced this word, but I think we say Boolean. And we're going to use this as, um, is this sheet, is this category sheet, sheet already in the file? Okay, there we go. So who can put this all together? Maybe in the chat, who can put this all together for us and use this Boolean variable, the value of which is always true or false, true or false, because it's a Boolean variable to help us down here. Because our logic is going to be, okay, set the value of the Boolean variable to false here. And then if the sheet is found, then we're going to set it to true, something like that. 
And then afterwards, so down here, we're going to decide, do we need a new sheet or not? There we go. So this code, these annotations here, again, our annotations are helping us out. So these annotations here, we're going to drop these in here. Okay, th this annotation I can take to the top. So I'm just doing some general tidying up, making sure as far as possible the annotations align with um, the annotations align with the code. You know, not necessary doesn't affect the code execution, uh, but does help think keep things as clear as we can. Get the name of the sheet for this category. We've done that. And there we go. Drop these in here. Okay. Yep. Uh, so some good ideas in the chat. Yeah, Mike and Paul saying this is a, a Boolean variable. And then Ian is saying, yeah, Ian's on the money with this logic. Does sheet found equal target sheet? Kind of, kind of. It's, it's something like this anyway, the logic uh, that we're looking at. But let's initialize this Boolean variable here. Sheet found equals false. Okay, so we've got our Boolean variable here, sheet found at the top, and we're initializing it. So this is called initializing a variable because we're assigning a value to it before the action really gets started. Initialize variable to false. Can you see how this all come together? Now, don't worry if you're struggling to um, if you're struggling to to follow this. You know this is this is quite complex stuff. There's no doubt about it. But we should be able to introduce a line of code now that's going to switch the value of the variable, switch the value of the variable to true if, if the category name is one of the names of the sheets in the file. That's our logic. Sounds a bit convoluted, doesn't it? Sounds a bit kind of long. But let me know in the chat if you can um, put, the, um, put the value, uh, uh, rather, if you can write that code if you can articulate that syntax put it in the chat we can see if we can um, take us home today won't go any further today david says is it not better practice to put the variables just before the routine it is used for it makes for reading the code easier i hope i spelled this right um put the variables just before the routine is is useful well the variable declaration david i think that's what you're talking about uh so they are at the top of the routine so I recommend, well, it's good practice to declare the variables at the top of the routine, of course, if they are routine level variables. Remember, we also have module level variables. You can go back to the traffic lights example there. Yeah, Mike, I think, is uh, su supporting that point in the chat. And just while we see if we get any more, um, just see if we get before we get any more uh, contributions. What am I trying to say here? Let me just remind you, we are having our members hang out today. So this is a little celebration of 50 members and just want to have a chat with the members. I know we've got plenty of members in the chat. So the people who have a little symbol after their name, uh, they're uh, some of our channel members. And you can go ahead. So if you click join uh, below this video, there's a little join button below this video. And you can go and check out the membership options. We have a one pound or one dollar membership option and i would love to see you in the members hangout if you just go to the community tab on the channel at about um in about 15 minutes so at about 16 45 quarters to five uk time uh we'll be able to hang out there okay yeah a few people are saying this quite difficult today yeah it is there, there's no doubt about it we've had to um incorporate a few different things together but as always just um Go through the video again at your own pace. The download file is available. So, and then it's all about stepping through the code, uh, you know, aligning Excel and VBA editor, doing all of, the, all of those things that we've been doing to help you understand uh, what's going on. Yeah, Frank's got a good contribution here. Simon's saying, yeah, I'm with you, Lee. Good. And, and Adrian as well. Yeah, you know, don't be disheartened. Uh, if it feels difficult, you know, it will uh, feel difficult, I'm sure. Right, so let's say um, if we're looping through the sheets here, so if Chris sheet dot name equals, and then it's going to be target sheet. So target sheet, that's where we've assigned the, the, the category to 
a we've assigned the category to a variable and we're saying to Excel okay if, if the name of the sheet in the file equals the value in the variable equals the category name then we want to do something and we're gonna say sheet found equals true and let's see if before we go today we can just prove this we can just get this working so at the moment what's gonna happen so going through the code so the value of target sheet is doc so that's the first um, from the first line of data the category sheet found variable uh, is false and then we're now looping through the sheets in the workbook the first sheet in the workbook is called data so we're not going to go to this line of code which is going to change the value of that boolean variable what's the next sheet in the file the next sheet in the file is task so what's going to happen well we're not going to execute this part of the conditional statement because the condition isn't met so just for experimentation now just to show you let's put a let's put a sheet in the file i'm going to call it dog here alt o h r on the windows pc change the value of the sheet alt o h r change the name of the sheet rather so we've now got a sheet called dog in the file let's go back to our data sheet here visual basic editor and let's see if the value of this sheet found variable is going to change zoom in on this okay hitting the f8 key now so we get the value into the variable so that's dog initialize our boolean variable there so the first sheet equals data target sheet equals dog so we're not going to go into the conditional statement what, what about the next sheet now th this is our dog sheet that we just created so hopefully yeah we're going to go to the other side the conditional statement sheet found is now true okay so at the moment that's not going to do anything particularly interesting but we've created a situation we've created two different states if you like it's a bit like the state concept that we had in the traffic light example we've got one state where the variable is true that means that the sheet has been found that means that we don't have to create the sheet then we've got another state where the variable is false so that means the sheet um, hasn't been found that means we do need to create the sheet i'm not sure if i explained it the right way but the role of the variable is to determine do we need to create the sheet or not yeah and as people have said yeah there's several things interacting here but not too much code only what seven or eight lines of code so really take the time if you can before tomorrow um, to copy out the code yourself you know that's going to be good practice copying out the syntax stepping through the code trying to understand what's going on and for a challenge if you can for a challenge try to add the sheet to the file if the sheet isn't already there you've got the mechanism to determine if the sheet is there or not see if you can do the next step see if you can get the code to put the sheet in if the sheet is not already there so there's a coding challenge for you let me know guys any final questions in the chat that's as far as we'll go today and i'll remind you one more time we're going to our members hangout in about 15 minutes so go ahead click join below this video grab yourself a membership we're going to have a chat uh, i'd like to hear about how you're using excel what you think about the videos what else you'd like to see on the channel just about more about how we can get the channel working for you as a member i'm looking forward to hanging out any final questions in the chat? Mm. Justin says, I'll see you tomorrow. Yes, Justin. I uh, hope the cat gets better. We'll see you tomorrow. Um, yeah, Mike says target sheet dot value. Yeah, well, you don't actually need dot value in target sheet, Mike, because um, dot value is, is the uh, default property, I believe. Something like that which which is why yeah it's a variable so you don't need to say dot value i'm not sure if it would work with dot value but yeah we don't need to say dot value because uh it's a variable so we don't need that additional syntax it might work with that syntax i'm not sure but i don't typically use that syntax uh if we're working with a variable there yeah frank's put some code in the chat for creating a worksheet so how are we going to um 
create that code to create a worksheet. Yeah, we've got our different sources of code. You could find some code online, recycle some code for another file. You could record the code. So start thinking about that. But we are going to do that tomorrow, of course. Welcome, Mike. Mike has just signed up for a channel membership. Really good to see you there, Mike. I'll see you in the members stream. Yeah, Lee's made a good point. I mean, the codes, yeah, it looks like a lot, but it's got it's got a lot of annotations in it. It's only actually, I mean, this is powerful stuff, but it's only actually, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's seven lines of code, seven lines of code. So I'd say, don't give up on this. Seriously, don't give up. Just say, I'm going to have an hour tonight. And you haven't got an excuse saying you're too busy. I know you're not too busy at the moment. If you're fortunate enough like to me, like me not to have been directly affected by what's going on. Seven minutes, uh, seven things. So 10 minutes, 10 minutes per line. Yeah, I, I know you understand this. This is from what, session four or something? This is just allocating a value to a variable. This uh, this is a, a for each loop. So looping through objects in a collection. We're only using stuff that we've already learned guys so don't give up i mean as always with this kind of program the numbers kind of um ease off at the end like we've only had about 35 people in today previously we had 50 at one point so make sure you're hanging in there because when it all comes together that's what happens you just go on this exponential curve of progress because everything comes together very quickly you can make progress very quickly that that next big breakthrough might be just around the corner Okay, guys, so best of luck. I will see the members in in the members hangout in five or 10 minutes. Go to the community tab on the channel. There will be a link to the members hangout in about five or 10 minutes. I would love to see you there, whether you're joining or not. Take care of yourselves. Don't give up with this code, guys. When it comes together, it is the best thing, the best thing. You are going to love it. Take care, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.